I'm here today with Dr. David Cook, the Technical Services Manager with Milk Products. Dr. Cook is going to be sharing with us five areas to focus on when cold weather is approaching. Welcome to the program, Dr. Cook. Thank you, Emily, for allowing me, on behalf of Milk Products, to share some very basic management tips to prepare for what may seem far off at this point, certainly today, calves in cold weather. Five areas that I believe we should focus on in cold weather are the first one, colostrum, feeding rates, bedding, ventilation, and sanitation. And there's several more, but those are the ones we're going to focus on today. In general, colostrum brings about passive transfer, which is transfer of the maternal immunity to the calf. There's a short window of opportunity where that transfer opportunity is open. A successful passive transfer of those maternal antibodies is important as cold weather approaches because diseases are more prevalent uh, during the winter. Secondly, calves need more calories during cold weather for maintenance, growth, and immune function and the cold weather itself brings about an increase in the energy requirement and we have to adjust their feed to meet that and maintain their growth and health during cold weather. Thirdly, focus on housing and bedding will decrease maintenance energy requirements. If you have opportunity for the calf to get out of the drafts and stay dry, you can reduce the impact that the cold weather has on the energy requirement. Fourth, focus on ventilation, keeping clean air, bacteria-free air in front of the calf and, and air changing at a regular rate will decrease respiratory disease issues. And lastly, sanitation is always important, but in the stresses of cold weather, when the immune system may be compromised, sanitation becomes much more important and is often neglected. The calf is born basically immunologically naive. It has no immune system of its own. The only opportunity for it to have immunity for the first week or two of life comes from the transfer of the maternal antibodies from the colostrum into the bloodstream of the calf. Calves that receive successful passive transfer of the maternal immunity demonstrate throughout their life reduced treatment rates, reduced treatment costs, reduced mortality rates, improved growth rates and feed efficiency, and they gain better as a calf, therefore they have decreased age at first calving and increased first and second lactation milk production. Essentially, calves are born without a fat covering. Fat covering in an older animal is really important to insulate them from the cold. And one of two things happen. The older animal in the cold will either have the fat to insulate them, but it also can utilize that fat and metabolize it for an energy source. The calf has no energy reserve in the way of fat, nor does it have the insulation. Therefore, as the energy requirement increases in cold weather, you need to increase their intake of energy to meet that need, and energy supports the immune system, growth and development, and sustaining life in the calf in the winter. For an example in the slide, if you take a calf that weighs 100 pounds, and your average daily gain in pounds per day is either zero, your maintenance, what their maintenance is, 0.5 pounds per day or 0.72 pounds per day. If you look at the metabolizable energy necessary to sustain that growth and maintain the animal, it's 1.75 megacals just for maintenance. It's 2.29 to sustain 0.5 pounds a day, half a pound a day of growth. And it's 0.2.60 megacals per day to sustain 0.72, a, a better rate of growth. That's at 70 degrees. Pounds of 2020 milk replacer needed to meet that need is 0.84 for maintenance and 1.25 for what I would call acceptable growth. If you look at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, the metabolizable energy just to maintain is 3.25 megacals per day. They need 1.56 pounds of a 2020 milk replacer powder per day to sustain that. And acceptable growth, they need 4.10 megacals of energy per day, and that takes 1.97, almost two pounds of 2020 per day. That represents an 85% increase in metabolizable energy need just because when the temperature goes from 70 degrees to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So an ideal feeding program would provide those extra megacals of energy to the calf. There are two ways to do that. One is you can add energy to the diet and continue to feed them the same amount of the same milk replacer that you were feeding them in the 70 degree weather. One opportunity to do that is a product called KCAL that we manufacture. It's basically spray dried animal fat 
feeding four ounces per calf per day will make up that 85% increase in energy requirement that when cold weather hits, the second opportunity would be to just feed them more. And often, if it gets really cold, below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which it often does in much of our customers' areas, if you feed them an extra one to two quarts daily, you can make up that increased requirement for energy just by feeding them more. Often that can be achieved by an extra feeding partway through the day that has the added advantage of the warm milk being in the calves' belly at a time when it really needs it. becomes very important for two reasons. Um, one is that the animal needs to stay dry, and so therefore it's something to absorb manure and urine underneath the calf. Secondly, a deep bedding, a deep straw bedding in the winter allows the animal to get down out of the drafts. As I said, they don't have fat, they don't have, you know, you're feeding them enough to maintain their energy. If they can get down into the bedding and get out of the drafts, it'll lessen the impact that the cold weather has on their energy requirement and certainly on the potential for disease. The other thing is pens set up with barriers to stop drafts. You have a long calf barn or hutches outside, have good solid clean walls is important for reducing draft too. There's a nesting score that you can apply where the uh, nesting score one through three, where one is the calf stands on top of the bedding where you can see his hooves, all the way to three as the picture shows where the calf can lay down and get out of the drafts and nest in the bedding. Scoring the nesting score can help you determine if you have enough bedding for the calf. Dr. Alfonso Lago did a study where he showed, where he took calves and gave them different nesting scores, put them in different nesting score scenarios, and then he measured bacteria in the air and he exposed them to, challenged them with increasing levels of bacteria in the air. And if you see on the x-axis, the airborne bacteria counts is how much bacteria is in the air, how concentrated the pathogens were in the air. And on the y-axis, you see the prevalence of respiratory disease in those calves that were challenged with that. If you look at a nesting score of one on the top bar with the open circles, you can see that at very low airborne bacteria counts, the calves succumb to respiratory disease. At the higher nesting scores, toward the bottom of the graph, you can see that if they have a good free nesting score of three, a good deep bedding, that they're more resistant to airborne bacteria and succumbing to the uh, respiratory disease. In ventilation, you want to have air change, fresh air in front of the calf without draft bottom line. One way to help that is some solid dividers between calves or between pens of calves so that the wind doesn't blow through the barn. Also prevents nose-to-nose -nose contact for transfer of, of respiratory disease. Secondly, you want airflow at calf level to reduce airborne bacteria. The positive pressure tubes are becoming used more and more. If they're properly installed, they create five air changes or four air changes per hour at calf level when the calf stands. And that changes the fresh air in front of the calf without a draft every four changes per hour. And that keeps the air in front of the calf free of bacteria and also prevents the drafts. One principle that's really important is all in, all out. Whether you're using hutches or pens to have a certain group of calves move through that or an individual calf move through that and then move that hutch or that pen to a new site or completely remove the buddy bedding from the hutch or from the pens between calves is really important. All in, all out means that that calf is exposed to that environment and when that, that calf or group of calves leaves that environment, the environment's changed for the next calf for a period of time. That's one area of sanitation that's important. The biggest issue probably with sanitation is the feeding equipment and the milk handling equipment is keeping those sanitary, clean and disinfect and dry between uses. It's a big issue in the winter because the calves are already in a compromised energy balance, as we discussed earlier, and energy supports the immune system. If you're supporting the immune system, but you're exposing the animal every day to unnecessary pathogens, then you're frustrating the issue, and you're not getting the full use of the energy in the calves' immune system that you could. We say the principles for cleaning and disinfecting milk bottles, nipples, buckets, mixing areas, is warm soapy water first to remove the debris, the manure, the saliva, and then rinse the soapy water completely off and then disinfect. Often what we'll, producers will do is they'll just soak the nipples in bleach water. That doesn't do any good unless you remove the manure and saliva.
saliva from it first, otherwise the disinfectant is not as effective as it would be if you cleaned the debris, the biological matter off of it first. And then rinse it thoroughly and let it dry until the next use. It doesn't have to be an expensive system. The racks and things like that shown in the picture below are very adequate systems and don't have to cost a lot of money. Keep everything dry, including the caps. Great. Thanks so much for sharing your knowledge with us, Dr. Cook. Thank you again for allowing Melt products to contribute to this valuable learning tool. For more information about calf management, visit www.progressivedairy.com backslash calves.